negatives. What do you do with them? Why should you keep them? And how on earth do you scan them? There is a bit of a school of thought about negatives that they give you the best scan of your photos. Because if you take a scan from a printed image, you are at the mercy of the printer settings selected by your local photo development shop. I've even seen a stack of photos with a line straight through them because they clearly had not cleaned the heads of their photo printing machine. So if you go back to the original source material, the negatives, you are going to get a better scan. But how exactly do you scan negatives? Well, there are a number of options, but before you go anywhere near a scanner, there are some prep work tasks that need to be done first. Preparing your negatives for scanning. No doubt your negatives have been stuck in a box in a dusty cupboard somewhere. So the first thing you need to do is to give your negatives a little clean. So you can clean your negatives with a soft lint-free cloth, give them a gentle wipe. But as your negatives are quite delicate, you don't want your fingerprints all over them. The best way to handle your negatives is while wearing gloves that are also lint-free. So you don't leave any pesky fluff on your negatives. How to scan your negatives. So your negatives are nice and clean, but how exactly can you scan your negatives? Well, there are a few options. Option one, use a film and slide scanner. There are specific scanners out there that are designed just for film and slide scanning. They're small and compact, but obviously, will only do negatives and slides. They are simple as it gets. You just insert the negative or slide into the scanner, press scan or copy button on the front of the scanner, and then save the image to your computer. Simple. Option two, flatbed scanner. If you don't want to invest in a specific film and slide scanner, there are also photo specific flatbed scanners out there that you can use for printer photos as well as your negatives and slides. My favorite is the Epson V600. And if you want to find out more about this scanner and check out the settings I think you should be using when scanning your negatives, then check out my other video in the link above. To be able to scan your negatives with a flatbed, you need to load your negatives into the negatives tray and reveal the transparency unit, which is like a light in the lid of the scanner to be able to scan through the negatives. The biggest challenge when using flatbed scanners to scan your negatives is the time it takes. You can only do a couple of strips at a time and it takes its sweet time to complete the scans. So you do need a good podcast to listen to to keep you safe. Option three, take a photo. If you don't want to invest in some new kit to digitize your negatives, you might already have the equipment to be able to digitize them, but it will take a little bit of work. Yes, this is sort of the simplest method, but it can be the least accurate, depending on your setup, as you need to illuminate the negative from the back and then take a photo of it. The most basic way and the most dodgy is to use the camera on your phone. If you illuminate the negative from behind using an iPad with a bright white screen, so a blank note with the brightness set to max, take a picture and then you can take that image, load it onto your computer and invert the colors using some basic photo editing software. So it's not going to give you your best image, but at least you'll be able to see what the negative looks like. But the other take a photo option will give you the best copy of your negatives, which is using camera scanning, where you take a DSLR camera on a camera stand and then a light box to illuminate your negatives. Then using a high resolution lens, you can take a picture of the negative, take that picture, load it into Lightroom, and then you can use a plugin like Negative Lab Pro to invert the colors and get the most amazing digital version of your negatives. But camera scanning is not for the beginner. And if you don't already have the kit, it is quite an investment. So something to think about there. Then once you have your digitized negatives, you can store them on your computer or back them up to the cloud. But most importantly, don't forget to share those lovely memories. Do you know any other great tools to help you digitize your negatives? I would love to hear about them in the comments below. Are you confused about which is the best cloud storage for your photos? 
Then check out my nifty tool to find the best cloud storage for your photos that can be accessed through the link below. So click through and I will see you there. If you enjoyed this video, then why not go ahead with a like and a share? Oh, and a subscribe. Have fun rediscovering your memories. I'll see you in my next video.